Hey gang, and welcome to your very first step in becoming a Node Ninja. All right then gang, now I do already have a Node tutorial on this channel, but I wanted to update it because now that's about four or five years old. So I wanted to do a quick refresh, a nice new Node tutorial, because in the future, I'm gonna create some more advanced Node tutorials as well. And then I can direct people to this more recent playlist to learn the basics first of all. Okay then, so first things first, what is Node.js? Well, as developers, when we're creating websites, we normally talk about code on either the front end inside the browser or back end code or server side code, which is the code which runs on a server. Now, JavaScript is normally confined to run in a browser in the past on the front end, and we'd use it to do things like add interactivity to a web page, like click events or things like that. Now, we never used to be able to run JavaScript directly on a computer or server, but Node allows us to run JavaScript on the server side as well, or even directly on computers. Now, before I explain any more about that, first of all, I wanna talk a little bit about how computers actually understand code. So computers really only understand machine code, but that is really complex to write and read. It's like binary, like this. So something called assembly language is built on top of that, which is a bit easier to read and write which is then assembled down into machine code so the computer can still understand it. But this right here, this assembly language is still overly complex to read and write. So built on top of that, we have programming languages like C++, which are abstracted a lot away from assembly code and they're much easier to read and write. So ultimately this C++ code is then compiled down to machine code so therefore we can write C++ code on a computer and a computer will understand it because it's being compiled down to machine code. Now, JavaScript is a language which is abstracted even more away from machine code than C++ to make programming easier still. But computers cannot directly understand JavaScript or compile it down to machine code. So we cannot directly run JavaScript on a computer, right? But it can run inside a browser. So how does that work? Well, running inside browsers is an engine called the V8 engine. And the V8 engine is written in C++ by Google and it compiles JavaScript into machine code at runtime. So by passing JavaScript code through this V8 engine in the browser, the computer can then understand JavaScript within the context of that browser. However, it cannot run JavaScript outside the browser because there is no V8 engine compiling it down outside the browser. It's confined to the browser only, but that is where Node comes into play. So Node.js is a program also written in C++ and that wraps the V8 engine. So this V8 engine that's in browsers also lives inside Node as well. Now, because Node is written in C++, it can run directly on our computer. So by installing and running Node on our computer, it can take our JavaScript it can run it through the V8 compiler that it has inside it, and it compiles our JavaScript into machine code. So that in essence, we can now run JavaScript directly on a computer or server and not just in a browser. But Node is more than just a wrapper for the V8 engine. It also hooks into the V8 engine to add more functionality to JavaScript so that when we are using Node to compile and run JavaScript, we can use all of this extra functionality in our JavaScript code. And that kind of functionality includes things like the ability to read and write files on a computer or to connect to a database, the ability to act as a server for content. These are all the kind of things you'd expect a server-side language to do. And now we can do them with JavaScript running through Node. Now, remember, JavaScript was originally made for the browser to add interactivity and not to run directly on computers or servers. So normally it can't do all of this stuff, but with the help of Node, it can. But on the flip side, since we're now using Node to run JavaScript outside the browser, we lose access to JavaScript features such as the document object model. We can't interact with HTML elements anymore, but we don't really need to do that when we're running JavaScript on a server and acting as a backend to a website, right? So just going back to computers and machine code, 
node now plugs into the top of this stack with the V8 engine so that now we can write JavaScript code on a computer, which is then compiled down into machine code for us so that computers can now understand JavaScript. And that is freaking awesome. So then now we've got a bird's eye view of what Node actually does for us. What would we actually use it for? Well, the role of Node in a website is basically to run JavaScript on the back end or server side, and then we're going to be handling requests coming in from a browser. So for example, a user might visit your website in a browser. Now that browser is going to make a request to the server. The Node server is going to run some kind of JavaScript to react to the request, and it might communicate maybe with a database or files on the server. Then it's going to formulate some kind of response and send it right back to the browser. Now that response could be an HTML page with dynamic data embedded inside it, or maybe some CSS and image files, etc. So basically, the Node server is running JavaScript on the back end to do all of this. So using Node in a website is pretty much an alternative now to other server-side languages like Python, Ruby, PHP, etc. But there are benefits of using Node over the others. First of all, if you're already familiar with JavaScript, then there's absolutely no need to learn a new server-side language because Node is going to be taking JavaScript and compiling it down so we can use the same language on the front end and the back end. And to that end, we can also share code for front end and the back end since they both use JavaScript. It's very popular and it's got a massive, massive community around it. So there's always help if you need it. And there's also a huge amount of third party packages and tools to help with web development. And we're going to see some of those as we go through this course. All right, then. So in this course, we're going to go from the absolute beginning. And to begin with, I'm going to show you how to install Node and use it to run JavaScript on your computer or in a server. Then we're going to see how to use Node to read and write files on your computer. We'll also see how to create a server and then make a website using Node by listening for and responding to HTTP requests. Then we're going to dive right into third party packages, in particular Express, to create an Express app. And that is a very, very easy way and a very popular way to build Node websites. Then we're going to introduce databases, in particular MongoDB, which is a NoSQL database. And we're going to use that to store data and then create dynamic web pages. And to that end as well, we will be using template engines, EJS in particular, to inject dynamic content into our HTML templates, which we can then send back to the browser. Finally, we're going to put everything together that we learn to make a node powered website project. So this is the little project we're going to create. It's a very simple blog website where we can list all of the current blogs. We can click on one to see more information. We can also go to add a new blog and I'll just call this one Mario Party and add in some Ninja Ipsum as you do like so and then click on submit and we can see that new blog at the top over here. We can also delete blogs by clicking on this little delete icon right here. And we have an about page as well, which every blog needs. So this is the project we're going to be creating using Node, Express and also MongoDB as the database as well throughout this series. Now, before we start, I want to make one thing crystal clear. This is not a beginner JavaScript course, and you should already know the foundations of the JavaScript language. Things like functions, how asynchronous code works, all that kind of jazz. And ideally, you should also know a little bit about HTML and CSS too, since at the end of the day, we are making a website and there will be HTML and CSS involved. Now, I've got courses on both of these things on this channel and on Udemy. I've got a modern JavaScript course and also an HTML and a CSS crash course as well. So the links to both of these are going to be right down below. All right then, gang. So the first step in all this is to install Node on your computer. Now, it might be that you already have Node installed on your computer, but you're just unaware of it. So in order to check that, open up a terminal. I'm going to use command prompt by typing CMD and pressing enter. And then in here, type node space hyphen V. 
and if you have node installed it should give you back a version number you can see mine is version 14.1.0 now if you don't get a version number it means you don't have node installed and you're going to have to go ahead and install it likewise you might get a different number a smaller number which means you have an older version of node in which case you might want to update it as well so in order to do that to install it or update it go to node.js.org this link will be down below and then click on this button right here to install the latest version that's going to download an installer run that when it's done and the install wizard will install node on your computer for you it only takes a couple of minutes now once you've done that i would suggest closing your terminal opening it up again and typing in node hyphen v just to make sure you get a version number and it's installed correctly so now you have node installed on your computer we can use it to run javascript directly on our computer and we could even do that directly inside this terminal so to do that i'm going to type node and then enter and that starts the node process and right now we see a blinking cursor and that's asking us to basically type some JavaScript to run through Node. So now I could write something like five plus five, press enter and we get back 10. That's valid JavaScript, right? And we could write any JavaScript code that we want to right here. So I could say var name is equal to Mario and then type name and we get back Mario. So any kind of valid JavaScript we can write inside this terminal. But ideally, we don't want to write code in a terminal all the time. It's going to be really tough to create a website this way. So instead, we're going to need a good text editor to work in. Now, I'm going to be using VS Code or Visual Studio Code, which is a great free text editor. And you can get it from code.visualstudio.com and click on this download button right here for Mac or for Windows. But you don't have to use this. You can use your own favorite like Sublime or Atom if you prefer. But at the minute, I would recommend this one. It's a really nice text editor. So anyway, once you have your text editor installed, open it up and maybe start a new project folder in that text editor. I'm actually gonna do that from the command line over here. So let me exit this process by clicking Control C twice and that exits out of the node process. Then I'm gonna to navigate to a folder where I want to create my new project. So I'm gonna say CD, which stands for change directory, to dive into a folder called documents that I have on my computer. Then CD again to go into another folder I created called tuts. And then right here, I'm gonna create a new directory by saying MKDIR, that stands for make directory. And I'm gonna call this node hyphen crash hyphen course and then i'm going to cd into that so cd node hyphen crash hyphen course and then i'm going to open up this particular directory inside vs code now to open that up from the command line in vs code i can say code dot and that means open up visual studio code in the current directory all right so press enter and that should hopefully open up visual studio code in this project directory we can see that right here node crash course okay so then now we have our text editor open let's just give this a whirl what i'm going to do is create a new file over here and i'm going to call this test.js and inside here i'm just going to write some basic javascript code so i'm going to say const and then we'll say name is equal to mario right and all I'm going to do is console.log name. So I've got a JavaScript file now on my computer. How do I run this JavaScript file? Well, I can do that through the terminal. So I'm going to go to terminal at the top and then go to new terminal and make sure you're in the correct directory where the file exists, where you made that file and then type node and then the file name. So in our case, test now you don't need to add the javascript extension because it knows we're going to run a javascript file so i can just say node test which is the name of the file press enter and it runs that file for us on our computer and we actually see down here in the terminal which is acting as the console for us this name mario okay so it ran the file it logged this to the terminal or the console down here so let me try this again i'm going to change this to something else like not your posh here, but Yoshi. 
and save that. Now I have to run this file again for it to work. So down here, I can just press up to do the latest command I wrote and press enter again, node test. And now we can see Yoshi right here. So we could write any JavaScript inside this file, then run it. And if we're logging things to the console, we're gonna see them down here inside the terminal. And that's how easy it is to run a JavaScript file on our computer using Node. This is not being run inside a browser anywhere now, it's being run directly on our computer. Now, finally gang, I've created course files for every single lesson in this tutorial series, and they're all found on this GitHub repo right here, Node Crash Course. Now, don't worry if you don't know how to use Git or GitHub or anything like that, you don't really need to know how to, to see the code or download the code. I'll leave this link down below, but essentially, each lesson in this series is gonna have its own branch in this GitHub repo. So we can see the branches right here. And if you wanna see the code for lesson four, for example, you could go to the lesson four branch and you're gonna see all of the code right here and all of the different files. Now, if you wanna download this, you can go to clone or download. If you're familiar with GitHub and Git, you can clone the repo to your local machine, or if you want to download a zip file with all of this coding, you can do by clicking download zip right here.